Black Ribbon Day. Every year on August 23rd, the European Day of Remembrance for Victims of Stalinism and Nazism remembers victims of totalitarian regimes. These include Stalinist, Communist, Nazi, and other fascist regimes. The day is also known as Black Ribbon Day. Throughout history, millions of people around the world had died under communist and fascist leaders. Two of the most evil leaders in history have included Adolf Hitler and Joseph Stalin. Hitler became the Chancellor of Germany in 1933. His evil regime lasted until 1945. Under his leadership, Nazis committed genocide against the Jews. But it wasn't just Jews who suffered. It was also the disabled, the prisoners of war, concentration camp inmates, and other ethnic groups. Over one million of Hitler's victims were under the age of 18. Nuremberg Laws. Since 1933, the Nazis had tried to exclude Jews and other undesirables from public life. In 1935, a new phase began, enforced biological segregation. At the annual Nuremberg rally, Hitler announced laws denying Jewish people citizenship and prohibiting them from marriage or sexual relations with people of German or related blood. Anyone with three or more Jewish grandparents was affected, irrespective of their own religious identity. The Nazis didn't invent concentration camps. The idea of camp holding civilians considered enemies of those in power had precedent in several other places first, including South Africa, Cuba, the Philippines, Nambia, and the United States. The Nazi innovation lay in their use of poison gas to murder people at sites we now call killing centers. Earliest victims of Nazi mass murder were people with disabilities. The Nazis saw people with disabilities as a burden and killed them using gassing facilities often located at hospitals in Germany. As the Nazis invaded most of Europe, the program expanded to target people with disabilities in multiple countries and people no longer able to work in concentration camps. Most concentration camp survivors weren't liberated in the same place they spent most of the war because they were put on death marches toward the center of Germany in the last days of World War II. The Holocaust is not the only example of a genocide. There are genocides happening today. Joseph Stalin assumed leadership over the Soviet Union in 1924. He was the country's political leader until his death in 1953. His policies became known as Stalinism. It was under Stalin's leadership that the Soviet Red Army captured Berlin in 1945. This act helped end World War II. But also under his long leadership, millions of people died. Most of these people were victims of ethnic cleansing, executions, famine, and forced deportations. Lenin founded the Gulag, an acronym for, in English, Main Administration of Collective Labor Camps, the network of prisons and forced labor camps throughout the Soviet Union but it was Stalin who employed them to the most hideous and at least semi-effective ends. The 
Gulag's primary purpose, though, was to gain control of the population through fear by imprisoning, torturing, and killing undesirable critics of communism and anyone who defied Stalin to drag the Soviet Union from its agrarian past into an industrialized society. More than 3.7 million Soviet citizens were forced into the camps. From about 1929 to 1932, in the name of furthering communism and strengthening his hold on the state, Stalin seized the land and property of millions of peasant families and forced them off their property with many landing in the Gulag. These people, Kulaks, were the richer of the peasant class and seen as a direct threat to Stalin's rule. So they were dispossessed, many were murdered, and others were exiled and forced to work in collective farms or in gulags in mining or construction where millions more died. According to the Harvest of Sorrow, Soviet collectivization, and the Terror Famine, around 14.5 million people died of starvation in the Great Famine of 1932 to 1933, also known as Holodomor. Estimates of the number of dead vary widely, but it's generally agreed that millions perished. Ukrainian and Kazakhstan were especially hit hard. But unlike other famines where drought was the main cause, it was Stalin's policies toward industrialization and away from small farm food production that contributed to this disaster. In 1936, Stalin initiated the Great Purge, aiming to rid the Communist Party of some of his biggest detractors and rivals. Hundreds of thousands of people initially were arrested by Stalin's secret police. Many were executed or sent to the Gulag. Of the 103 highest ranking members of the Communist Party, 81 were executed. Stalin's brutality did not stop with civilians and enemies of the Communist Party. It extended to the very people that were fighting for him and the country. In 1942, the Germans pushed their way toward Stalingrad in the early days of World War II. Stalin issued one of his most well-known and cold-blooded edicts, Order Number 227. It declared that panic makers and cowards are to be liquidated on the spot. In another famous order, Stalin said that we have no prisoners of war, only traitors of the motherland. Millions of Soviet prisoners of war were interrogated on their return. About half were sent to the Gulag and many thousands were shot or otherwise died at the hands of their countrymen. Though Stalin sent thousands of his own Soviet prisoners of war to their deaths, he turned a blind eye to how his soldiers performed on the battlefield. If they fought admirably, meaning if they won battles, Stalin did not bother himself with how they did it or the fallout after. After hearing reports that Soviet soldiers raped women in Germany and elsewhere, he was reported to have said, what is so awful of having fun with women after such horrors? We produce five videos per week, so please click on the like button and subscribe to see future videos. Like, comment, share, subscribe.